Hello and welcome back to the Art and Modular Paint and Patch and we are on live stream 3. Uh, here again totally unorganised because I got this tricky piece of software that allows me to stream and show my pictures on my computer, uh, bring in other people YouTube and I've been fiddling around with it for ages and it's just started working. I'm live streaming on it now and I'm hoping I'm live streaming but I'm not too sure where I am. So uh, that's took my time away. And also today I've got deeply into some artwork. Uh, it's been a great day actually. Um, it's just... Um, you know I'm painting the, the commission for, for Gary Newman. And I suppose that uh, actually, um, as we go through the weeks of this, you might get a little bit bored because, you know, the same projects do crop up. And that's because artwork isn't really just, um, you know, sort of produced overnight. It does take quite a bit of time. My technique used to be very fast. I've got a piece back there I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, used to be very fast, very fluid, and I used to paint with traditional artist oil, not traditional artist oil, sorry, traditional um, household and industrial paints like gloss paints, um, very hardcore um, oil based gloss because it just gives a beautiful finish. Uh, the modern acrylic based glosses just don't give the, um, the, the feel of these, so this is painted in, in gloss paint with acrylic base so I do some jiggly poking with acrylic layers and then I build up the gloss on top. Now the downside to this way of painting is, and I've, I mentioned it last week, is that it's very caustic and it really really smells, it's really fumey um, and I need quite a big studio as well because I'm throwing a lot of paint around and literally I have to close the studio then go back in a week, let the fumes out because you just can't work in there with it and dry them off and it takes quite a long time to dry. Um, but it's been a medium that I've painted in now for 15 years and I have painted in acrylics and oil traditional oils before then and I've sort of made this concerted decision a concerted effort and decision to go back to traditional oils for lots of reasons the main reason is they're just beautiful um, they're not caustic I mean you know they're pigment mixed with linseed oil they smell beautiful. I can work with them in the house if I want. I can work with them down here if I wanted in my music studio and there wouldn't be a problem with that, which I quite like the idea of maybe, you know, droning going on and, you know, uh, start painting. But today I've actually commandeered our conservatory uh, to painting and it's been beautiful and I love working from home. Um, the problem is when you've got a studio, you've got to go to it, you know, you've got to get ready, go out, go to the studio, to get anything, you've got to come back, you, you know, there's, there's the logistics. When it's in your house, you wake up, like I woke up this morning, I was like, I didn't even get dressed. I was, I had clothes on, but I was like, I didn't even get dressed. And uh, uh, I had all my test pieces for, for the Gary Newman, uh, all sort of undercoated and everything got on the, the table. And I just, whoa, I got the urge and I was in there. And again, with the traditional oils, there's just no hassles. There's, you know, I can do that within that environment. Um, and it was very beautiful. I really had a, and a magical morning. Um, I didn't get anything that was where I want to be for Gary's piece. I mean, one, it wasn't the colours that I'll be using, and secondly, I'm just trying out a lot of techniques at the moment, because what I want to get with traditional oils is my DNA, the DNA that is um, in that piece behind you. Um, it's sort of my my DNA, if you like, that, that type of look which has evolved over the last 15 years. And I want to sort of bring that into oils. And that's going to take me some time. It's a bit of a weird one because I want to really crack on with all these commissions. But I think it's time. I just got this inner feeling. It's time to turn to 
traditional oils and do that so I'm sort of getting back into them and remembering how beautiful they are it's more of a longer process because you know I'll have to allow layers to dry for certain things um, I can do a lot wet to be fair and I have to die and with this new tricky piece of software that I've got I might be able to call up the piece now this piece isn't you know it's a test piece and the thing about this doing this, this uh, sort of weekly vlog is that um, I'm sort of going to show things warts and all really you know music warts and all it's not going to sound good might sound good you know my artwork how I build up to a piece so you get an idea of what goes behind it because you see a piece and you go oh great he's, that's a painted piece and that's great and that goes up for sale and you know what how much for that and that couldn't have took too long but the process takes a fair bit of time uh, to do and uh, you along the way you do some test pieces that don't work out some work out uh, this piece I've got which I've got I'm going to dry tonight it's going to dry over overnight and then I'm going to add some more layers so it's sort of like my base piece I'll see if I can call it up on on this uh, new piece of software that I've got oh okay that sort of worked didn't it I'm going to drag this up here and um, there you go so this is I don't know whether you can see I'll have a look back today whether you can see my uh, cursor over this um, this is all traditional oils it's not where I want it to be it's quite dull because obviously I've used sort of greys but it's sort of got a bit of a DNA of where I'm coming from the layers the drag layers um, it needs more contrast I'm going to drag some white over it tomorrow uh, bring some other colors in there um, I don't know it's it's not a piece of artwork that's great it's a test piece but um, maybe when I show you the piece behind me you might see there's some of my DNA coming through on on, on that um, and um, it's hard to you know you cannot turn around to traditional laws and get that you just can't because the, the 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 mechanics of how the paint reacts dries reacts together it's it's totally different and so whether I try and transfer that onto acrylics or traditional oils it's a bit of a steep curve to get there um, I've chosen a mixture of both um, I've got some ideas about sort of acrylic bases and then built up with some um, traditional oils on top so I'll keep you posted on that I'll show you sort of all my little studies along the way to get to it but today oh, I love it when I get a day like this because it's like I'm in that zone and I'm just lost it's beautiful it's, it's almost meditative it's relaxing it's it's a really lovely experience um, I'm gonna say it's almost like channeling something else I mean at this point some people are gonna go what Ooh, that's a bit weird. some people who maybe get in that zone of sports art whatever you do and you get into that zone some people probably know what I mean sometimes you just think how, do I, how did I do that how did that work and it's just this lovely universal channeling thing that just happens and it's beautiful and I feel very relaxed after after that happens. So I put um, the uh, track on the Gary Newman track uh, on uh, just on repeat. I mean, I've literally been listening to it for a week, and today it's just been on repeat all day, just really soaking it in. It's a great track, as I've mentioned before. It's a really brilliant track. It's dark. It's moody. It's it's got uh, it's got a visceral sort of feel to it. Um, I know I can paint great stuff to it uh, and I've just had a lovely lovely morning the only problem is that morning was supposed to be to get stuff ready for, for, for today so uh, as a precursor warning I'm not going to be doing any music um, for a couple of reasons um, I had a friend over last night I hadn't seen him for years um, I didn't really know he was into sort of uh, music and creating music himself uh, since last I think it was something like eight years we haven't caught up and we just seen each other on social and you know got talking and he came around for a jam because he um, he lives in uh, Hereford same place I live in 
And so he bought his virus ram, which whew, the sounds on that thing, I mean, you know, are amazing. It's, uh, it's no wonder a lot of people use the, uh, the virus because it is just a great sounding thing. Um, but I knew he'd be interested in looking at the continuum. So the problem with the continuum is, is that there's no LED panel on it at all. You can uh, get presets, but those presets have got to be put in your sound engine first software and you've got to remember the presets. That's not so bad, but I thought because he's coming down, I'd plug the iPad in and you can get into the sound engine and have a look what's going on in the sound engine and then quickly move between presets. Be nicer. The only problem is, is my um, software in there wasn't working well with the iPad and so I reached out to, to the guys at Continuum and I just needed to upgrade my, um, my software, not my software, but my firmware which I thought I had done, I thought I'll do it before Chris comes, anyway, it just, you know what, it just went wrong, everything went wrong, I uploaded the wrong thing, it did the wrong thing, it crashed, poor old Chris, there, looking at this continuum, I'm sure he was thinking, oh god, I want to get my hands on that, and uh, it just bugged out, so, uh, it was nice though because we had a catch up, uh, you know, um, we, we made a few drones here and there. Um, we're going to do another jamming session uh, in a couple of weeks time I think. If anything nice comes of it I'll, I'll record that and um, you know, and now I've got this software that I can flip between things and I might be able to show a video on here as well which would be quite nice. Um, so yeah, that was a good night, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and But then uh, again, uh, that was a bit of a night that I thought, oh, well, you know, might be able to pre pre prepare a bit, but then, like, after Chris went, it's like, oh, no, I'm going to go to bed now. Uh, so, and then today's just seen by, so, yeah, got no criteria down for today, so I thought I'd just talk about the artwork and, you know, what today ha has been happening in today. Uh, we'll, like last week, have a look at a piece of my artwork I've got back here, just let you know what's going on with that, and then, again, touch on the synths and the modular and you know see where we're going there and of course i'm going to try and keep it well below 30 minutes i've got a timer on this one which is quite good and we're at 12 minutes so i'm not going too badly um, okay so on to a bit of the artwork behind me as i said before i do keep pieces of artwork in the studio that i like from a collection and the cinematic collection there's a couple of pieces that i kept back from that and i painted that about three years ago they are now going to go up um, in, I'm going to release them to the galleries and, um, and online and, and things like that um, because I'm starting to paint this new collection now and um, you know the new collection I'll have new pieces in and I'll probably end up keeping a few of those back for myself. Well in fact the Art Modular Synthesis project that again we'll go into in different weeks I want to keep all those anyway. Uh, I'm only going to sell limited editions of, of that because I want to keep the originals in the collection to be shown into shows. Uh, but let's talk about the one behind me. And this is, um, right, I'm going to just like push the mic at myself, turn it up and hope you will be able to hear me. So, okay, oh, okay, that sounds... That looks like it sounds okay, actually. So um, this here is a track from um, Man With A Move A Camera by the Cinematic Orchestra. And the track itself that it's painted from is uh, Man With A Move A Camera. That's the actual track. And again, if you've not heard that album, you know, go on Spotify, um, Apple Music, uh, Man With A Move A Camera is just amazing genius uh, they it's a soundtrack to uh, an old film and it's really worth watching it with the film as well because it's just oh, no, I love cinematic orchestra the brilliant so anyway hence why painting some of their music okay here we go so the trouble is with my lights you get a lot of reflection off this and as you can imagine it's gloss paint you see there so it is very reflective which looks lovely but on camera the light gets to a bit so I'm going to just push it forward a bit. Now this is gloss paint and I will show some footage of our paint uh, on one of these or how I did paint on one of these um, going forward. I'm throwing a lot 
the paint around. This here, and like the one I showed you last week, was built by, first of all, building acrylic layers up underneath. You can see right the way through that it's very dark. Well, those are the dark acrylic underpinning layers that go on first. Um, again, this is just to give a depth the feel um, through the paintwork. And then on top of that, there is some thrown paint, uh, which gives this organic sort of um, work that comes up here. And I always think this, when you actually see it close up, looks like an x-ray. I mean, this is one of my favorite pieces. I, I love this piece to bits. And I would be very, very sad to see this one go. Uh, it's adorned my walls and I love it. Um, so that was all the organic work was done underneath the red was done underneath that was one layer okay and then i covered that with um just a, a little bit of um canvas and then from about there onwards i painted this base level and this base level is just like whoa it's loads of let me see if i can eh, get the yeah, it's a bit better. Loads and loads and loads of paint go on there and it merges together and it gives this lovely sort of repelled colour of oils between this uh, sort of blush pink, uh, warm greys and whites. Um, and then when that is um, also, you know, all done and there's lots of it, I literally put the the painting up right like this because it's, it's lying on the floor at this point and put the painting up right and then this drips all the way to the bottom and then I get a sharp piece of perspex and I cut into it and drag it all the way back to reveal all the underpinnings again very similar to the one I did um, showed you last week and that's how we get this um, sort of beautiful um, I say beautiful, this is that's my artwork, should I be saying that? I'm not sure, perhaps that's for somebody else to say. Um, this beautiful um, sort of layered texture uh, that you sort of want to peer through and look around. Uh, and as for the colours, I just really go with gut instinct. Um, I have them all out, um, I listen to the track and I go with the flow of the track. This particular piece is on a uh, board. It, there's, no, there's no canvas on this one. Sometimes I do stretch a canvas around the, the, the thick board in. And on the back, there is two wooden stays uh, and my big old signature and a few paw prints. And that's because when it goes on the wall, I want a shadow gap. So you won't see these stays. When it goes on the wall, the wall's there and then this structurally juts out from the wall there's a gap which casts a shadow uh, a shadow gap so it just looks like it's floating away from the wall it's just a, a lovely structural touch that i like on some of my work some are canvases and they're thicker and i have them straight against the wall some i do on board or some i wrap um, canvas around the board depending on what finish i want and on these boards i have this that pushes them against from the wall giving it this shadow gap so it looks like it's floating. So it's just like a nice little structural element to it. So that is um, Man With A Movie Camera. Uh, one of my, well, just one of my favourites, and that's why I've kept it for such a time, but he's gonna have to go at some stage because I have more uh, painting to, I don't know, you know, you can't see that up there actually, so you have to see the shadow gap. But I've got more paintings to do, so, that has got to uh, got to go. So just turn this down a bit so I don't blow everybody's ears out. So yeah, so that's sort of the painting rounded up, and I'll talk about some of my other projects. Uh, next week um, but the week after that is Super Booth. can you believe Super Booth is around here again uh, for people who are into art um, Super Booth is I just thought I don't even know if I've got any comments so if there's anybody in I apologise uh, because on this new software I'm not too sure whether the comments work or not I don't know 
Anyway, and there might not be anybody on, so that's fine. Um, so, if you're just in here for the art, Superthoof is this gathering trade show, eclectic, um, almost tribal gathering of people that worship modular synths and all things electronica. Uh, and it's just an amazing, amazing event. Went last year, totally loved it. All the Eurorack manufacturers there, it's where I tried the continuum. Uh, you know, I was going around, as it, like, you know, looked at all this Euro stuff. I was like, oh, great, well, that's fantastic. And then I stumbled on the continuum and I go, oh, I've seen one of these before. And I sat down and from the moment I touched it, I was like, oh, man, this is good. I need one of these. I need one of these in my life. <gasps> How much? Uh, so, uh, and that's what took me on the track to get a continuum. If I'd not played one, you know, I probably wouldn't have one now, but it was at Super Booth, I played it and um, just thought it was totally amazing. I can't wait, so uh, I'm going to try and take one of these because I'm going to be at Super Booth while this is going live, <laughs> and, and the week after next I'll try and take something to, to put up for that. But I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm trying to think of my standout things from last year, and there was a couple, um, and... Um, one was very simple, and, and I want to talk to Tom, the designer. I hope he's there at um, Supermove again. And it's from Thonk. And let me see if I can get this back up on. And we don't want that. Let me. This might be a bit slicker in times to come. So, current application. So, yeah, okay. So, I don't know whether you can see all this. Um, but it's the music thing modular. Uh, it's like, how can I describe this? It's, um, it has a tape head in it. That's the tape head. But you can actually plug a tape head into it uh, on the end of like a long cord. They've got, I don't know whether I'll be done for this, but I've got this little bit here. So look at that. So he's plugged, a, he's plugged a tape head into it, and he's actually scratching on uh, magnetic tape there. And I've just got to have one. Uh, you have to make them though, and I've not really done any DIY stuff. And this, um, I don't think this is the simplest thing to make. I had a quick word uh, with the guys at Thonk. Um, and plus there's no real um, I don't think schematics of how you make the the flexible head at the moment but you know I've I was talking about um, the uh, I was talking about how I want my modular system to sort of be an analogy of tape that sort of Pierre yeah, Shave uh, music concrete. I don't want to do music concrete. That's not where I want to be. Or, you know, I want to be, you know, me. But I want to sort of have that tape um, looping philosophy behind my Eurorack system, and that's why at the moment I'm very torn between the Magneto or um, the uh, Morphogene to, to the bigger modules that I would like to get. Um, but this, the, the, um, this particular piece I would love because I could say for instance, um, create some tape loops, stick the tape loops down on in like sort of this type of thing. Then I could have a space in, in the Euro rack where I can just plonk that in on different cards, different you know, different type samples on different cards, and start running the the head over that into something like a magnetron morphogene. I just think it'd be amazing. Um, so that caught my eye, and I'd like to talk to them a bit more this year about that. And definitely want one of those. I mean, you know, it's in kit form. It's thirty three pounds. It's no brain. It's just that at the moment I can't build that kit. Um, so I'm looking at maybe I'll maybe get somebody else to build it and um, 
definitely something I would like in my system with the that sort of analogy of you know having it sort of like a tape based system and I think that's where I really really want to go with that system um, I mean it, it's got quite a lot of synth voices in there and I do want that I mean you know I've been looking at um, a really fancy marbles and um, maybe rings or something like that um, but um, I do want to have it you know really sort of tape based which isn't tape based I know because these modules mimic tape but I think that's where I want to be and I've been really listening to the um, the Strymon um, Magneto and it sounds beautiful and it really does sound like tape you know it's got a beautiful warm saturation with it so uh, yeah I'm thinking of um, having a chat to them as well at Superboove there was tons at Superboove um, last year but this as well just I loved messing around with this uh, and that is if I can get back on here the Erica Synth Fusion, oh wow, I mean I don't know whether, again I don't know whether I'll get done for copyright on this but oh it's got valves, it's oh it's just amazing, um, I had quite a play with that uh, I thought it was amazing and to be fair you know my Vostox back there I mean I just use that for a drone machine really and this you know this could take over that very very easily and it's it's a lot smaller and what well, temptation to have that you know in this row here as my drone Whoa. yeah I mean the rawness of uh all the sort of tube stuff in there i mean uh it's just yeah it's it looks brilliant for a start but also sounds great too um the other thing that I, I didn't actually get to have a go on that i want to have a go on this year is the endorphin shuttle because i've been lusting after one of those for a long time um and i really th feel that it, it'd go well I probably wouldn't have one at the moment because I've got a lot of equipment still to master and my my thing is to master those pieces of equipment before I sort of move on and buy anything more complex and I'm getting there you know not quite there with it I about a month ago I had my DFAM under control it was looking sounding fantastic and then I didn't do anything with it for a couple of weeks and then I just got out of the groove and um, last night uh, sort of tried to get back into it but all these things I think take time but um, I really want to have a look at the shuttle, the endorphin shuffle and of course there's going to be lots of new stuff that's um, you know going to be announced at Superboof and it's just four days of great stuff in Berlin um, where it's held is lovely, the vibe is lovely um, you know I can't say any, anything more higher of it so I'm looking forward to that and of course that will give me lots of content to come back and talk to you you guys about so I think that we are at 28 minutes mm, I'm not doing bad keeping to my 30 minutes so I think that basically rounds it up if anybody comes on here and they've got any um, any sort of um, use with the magnetron or the morphogene or have used them both it'd be nice to hear what you think would be <coughs> A good one to buy first out of those I'm leaning towards the magnetron at the moment um, but that could be swayed again I might have a look at both of those at Superboove and, and s see how that goes there's a few other bits I need to buy for that and you know I'll have a chat to you uh, next week about that but um, if you're new to the channel then please subscribe if you can or is it over there um, and hit the bell and so if you want to come on live then um, it'll notify you of me going live I think that's it really um, I will keep you up to date with projects next week next week and hopefully um, I will unbrick my continuum and uh, I'll actually because that's what I was going to do this week so yeah so I forgot to tell you that I was going to do a 
a sort of looping performance on the continuum. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I've got to load the new firmware. So um, yeah, so hopefully we'll have some um, sort of sound exercises next week. Uh, if I can sort the, the, the problem with the sound out as well, because I've noticed that because I'm just like doing these big walls of sound, there's so much frequency in it. I think it just like absolutely freaks out the the bandwidth issue with streaming, and then it just last week it's just come over like a tin can. It just sounded like it was in a tin can. In here, it sounded fine, um, but and I've heard lots of you know YouTube videos that sound good um, but I don't think they're as densely filled out with the, the sound spectrum as mine you know you, you've got your nice sort of bass kick you know stuff going on I think that might be a bit better to stream or I don't know whether just streaming is no good for sound whether really uploaded video is the way to go forward with that because you get better sound quality I'll have to look into that either way um, Chris mentioned to uh, start a, um, a SoundCloud channel up and record it on SoundCloud as well. So, you know, it sounds like a tin can, but you think, oh, there might be something there. I'll listen to it in, you know, a decent quality. Then I'll put SoundCloud link in the uh, descriptions from then on and then go from there. So, um, so yeah, I'll see technically how that works next week. I'll do some practice runs with it and see if I can get sound up to a decent decent level so that's all from me this month um please come by next thursday it's always at 7 30 i stream live i try and keep it to 130 minutes hopefully as the episodes go by i'll get a bit more smooth and i've got this software that i can do things with that's quite nice and um you know tailor it to what you're interested in as well so always just throw any comments in uh, on you know what you'd like to know what I'm up to or more on different subjects that, that I do but um, I think that rounds it up for this week so have a great week and I will see you this time next week <laughs>